Hey everyone, I am back for another Craftsman's Corner. It has been a while since I've done one of these videos, or any video um, for that fact, but uh, I wanted to just do another one and kind of update you of where I'm at with things as far as the shop goes and projects and when I'm going to be back making videos. Um, the biggest reason why I haven't been putting on any videos lately it's because I've been in sort of a transitional phase, getting the house finished. Um, it's been a very long process over this past year, very busy, and um, but I have, I'm now living in the house, and uh, it is not completely finished upstairs, but I sort of transitioned down into the basement, and I'm working on getting the shop put together, as you can see behind me, and. Uh, for those of you who follow on Facebook, you've seen some uh, photographs being put up as updates, so you can see that the shop is now somewhat active. Um, I guess to speak on that a little bit, uh, it was pretty, uh, it wasn't too bad, but it was pretty tough getting a lot of the equipment in here, my workbench, table saw, and some of the newer equipment that I've got that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, I'm sort of saving that for specific videos that are where I want to talk about it because it's pretty cool um, pretty cool stuff that I've got coming up soon as far as uh, tools and equipment goes um, let's see what else uh, the biggest thing was probably getting the shop cleaned up it was just I mean the basement cleaned up it was full of junk lumber uh, it was just filthy it was just full of trash and from an entire year of working upstairs, throwing stuff down here, sort of not knowing what I want to do with it. Do I keep it? Do I get rid of it? And uh, the easiest thing was to keep it on hand in the basement. And so that's what I did. But a lot of that is being gotten rid of. And then pressure washed the walls, painted the walls with the um, a waterproof paint. It was the, well, I'll talk more on that on specific videos. But um, waterproof paint the walls, epoxy painted the floors. Huge difference. Um, uh, and uh, one of the biggest differences is just the lighting, how much it's improved, just how bright it is down here. Painting the walls white reflects the light around a lot better and just cleaning it up. It, it makes a world of difference. Um, right now I do not have dedicated lighting set up. I've just got some clamp lights put up behind the camera where that's where I leave them while I'm working. But um, once I know more about where all my tools are going to land and i got to build my workbenches around the walls and um, once I get everything figured out, including sort of the ducting for the dust collection, then I'm going to know exactly where to actually put the lights, and I'm going to come in and put um, put all my lighting everywhere so the videos will be very bright, very clear, not grainy at all. Let's see, what else? Um, well, uh, I've got several projects going on right now, two furniture projects. I'm sort of catching up on some orders and then making a kitchen island for this house, which that's going to be actually featured in an entire video. Um, so I'm filming that video now. I've got several videos I'm filming now, which will be the first videos filmed out of the new basement shop. They won't have the great lighting that I'm hoping for in the future, but I wanted to go ahead and get back in the track of things. Um, but uh, as you can see behind me, I've got the radial arm saw. Um, radial arm saw is up and running. That was my first thing I did after I got sort of the tools in and the, the floors and walls painted. Was I needed um, a way to cross cut and not to create a bunch of dust. So this is going to be something I didn't do a video of making this whole bench that the radial arm saw is mounted into. But um, but once it's all done, I'm going to kind of go in depth and talk about it. Other shop projects to come up. Uh, uh, in general, the thing I'm kind of getting interested in the most down here in my little shop is dust collection. Because uh, before, you've seen in a lot of my videos that I'm just working out in the yard and I am doing some stuff in the shop, but it's basically just putting on a respirator and it just being super dusty, walking out of the shop, which is covered in dust, dust on my eyelashes and everything uh, covered. Um, and uh, while I still use a respirator when I'm working in a shop, even with the dust collection, it is just amazing how much cleaner it stays um, when you uh, start pulling the dust right at the tool versus just vacuuming it up later. So what I did is I got one of the little Harbor Freight uh, tiny little portable dust collectors as a temporary solution 
and I had a section about 20 feet of dust hose, four inch hose. So it's one of the, uh, let me just go ahead and show you. That little dust collector right there. I'm not gonna talk too specific about anything, but, um, cause I'm gonna talk all about this stuff later, but I have the dust collector running through a trash can separator and then just hooks it up to, hook it up to whatever tool I want. So um, that is something I'm really enjoying. And then the other thing that's making a big difference in the shop is that right there. That is a jet air filter. It is the um, AFABS or AFS 1000 something. I can't think of the, what its actual model number is, but uh, it's got that um, 5 micron filter on the outside, a 1 micron filter on the inside. It's got timers. It's got a remote control. Um, it's very nice. It's got three different speeds. So when I'm doing something kind of dusty, I just crank it up and uh, go with it. And then also the other thing I use as dust collection is my shop vac. I've actually got two of them. Um, so if I'm using like my Festool track saw, I can just hook right into it or my sanders. I just stick them right on the back. Any tool I have a little port on, I just toss it right on there. And that is very nice. Another cool thing, cool to me at least, when I'm geeking out down in the basement is, um, I never have used this before on any saw. These always just end up in a drawer somewhere. But I have, in the past couple days, I have turned into a huge fan of it. It keeps the dust way down because um, you've got the dust collection on the bottom. So this is sort of sealing it up and allows some of the dust, I think, to get pulled down more instead of shooting up. Um, now, of course, it is sort of, it's not going to work with every cut. Um, uh, so like when I'm doing certain types of cuts, like if you're not cutting all the way through and you're just doing a, a dado through something, you can't use it. But um, other than that, uh, it's been kind of nice using it. And the other thing I did is I rigged my shop vac up onto the back of it, and I taped it off on the back and taped it off on the front, and sort of acts as an overhead dust collector, and that was amazing, because right now, and I've got a video I'm going to be showing on this blade very soon. This is one of the Diablo, uh, Freud Diablo ripping blade, the 24 tooth blade from Home Depot. Um, for whatever reason, that thing kicks up so much dust. It just does, I don't know what it is, but it, it does, it's just dustier than, um, dustier is the wrong word. It is just throwing chips. Once the chips go down into the, um, the cabinet, they're coming like back up out the backside and it's just, uh, they swirl around in here and then they were shooting out up onto the front even though I had it taped off. Um, so I just rigged up my, shop vac on here temporarily and all these are just experiments for probably different shop made versions of like an overhead dust collector or dust hood whatever they're called um that i'm going to work on later but i put that on there and let's see i ripped three uh three two by sixes in half and this is all that was all that was all that's on there so you can see you've got this black tabletop table saw top so I mean you can really see the dust on it good that's all that was on there after three uh, rips versus I mean all down in here would have been filled up before it would have been a mess so yeah like I said I am getting excited about dust collection I'm gonna end up with some sort of cyclone um, cyclone dust collector coming up soon ish I'm not sure exactly what uh, what kind of collector I want to use or get, um, but uh, sooner or later. But it's it's a lot that needs to happen first. I need to kind of get back on a money making schedule of working on my stuff. Um, I need to get a lot done with the shop here. Um, figure out where I actually want everything to where once I get the dust collector, that's going to go on the other side of the shop. Um, this sort of side of the shop I'm in now is going to be the main woodworking area but there's a whole other half uh, and then through this wall here there's a whole another room um, that is probably going to be a turning room over here and something else and then the metal lathe in the other corner and then on this side more of a mechanical type shop um, metal and other things um, but I think the dust collector will actually be on the other side just to keep the noise down I'll still keep this air filter here uh, 
but um, but yeah, I need to know where all my where all the equipment's going to go before I can actually um, do all the ducting for the dust collector. But uh, I think that should probably be it. I'll quickly show what projects I'm working on. Got a farm table, got a bench that's going with it, and then I'm working on a kitchen island. This is actually a set of four legs glued up. They're not all glued together, just there's glue every other joint. Um, and then there's the top and then the seat for the bench is here. So um, got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, it is a small shop, but I'm getting a lot, uh, a lot done in it. Let me give you an overall shot. So this area right here will have some equipment along the wall, but I'm going to have sort of a, a work area here. The table saw goes here, but it's on a mobile base, so I can kind of spin it around and flip it for whatever I'm doing. But I also want to do some sort of like an outfeed table for it, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I might do some sort of like drop leaf thing on the back of it. Um, so we're compact down here, but once this is all set up, I'm going to have a really, I think, efficient and productive space for the things that I do specifically. Um, so I'm excited for that. And then for the ones that uh, can't really remember the tours from um, before or the other channel, or I'm not sure if I posted on this channel, I think I have. Um, this is the other sort of half. Um, and then over there is the room that I'm gonna turn to a turning room. That room has had nothing done to it yet. So the next thing I do after this table's done is I gotta get this out of the uh, out of the basement to the customer and then I gotta take all the junk out of that room, move it over here, do the whole process that I did over here, painting the walls and the floors and get that room set up and my lathe moved in which is just kinda temporarily parked right here and um, got some different sheet goods. It's gonna be dark but I'll just kinda glance over here. Okay you can't see anything so you can see my hands I'll tell you. There's a big stack of wood here and then um, just a bunch of other junk but all that's going to get moved out and then um, I'm not sure exactly yet I think I'm gonna do some sort of a clamping rack on this wall here to clamp tabletops um, up vertically against the wall but that is it for now that was a very long video we're coming up on 25 minutes but uh, it's been a while so I had a lot to kind of go on and I think the only people watching these videos are the ones that want to watch them. So those of you who didn't want to watch, well, you're long gone. Um, so that will wrap up the videos for now. I hope you're looking forward to some of the upcoming videos. I know I'm looking forward to making those videos because that's going to mean a lot of progress is happening when you see them. So um, just keep on tuning in. I do thank you for uh, sticking with me and checking in for new videos. I've been getting um, different questions and messages asking me if I was all right. I always think that's funny. People ask you if you're all right. You don't post a video for a couple weeks and they think you keeled over or something. But uh, I've just had a lot going on with the house, with the shop, and other things. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you soon in other videos. Look out for those probably in the next week or so. One should be popping up. Um, other than that, thank you for watching this extraordinarily long video, and I'll see you next time.